It's the middle of July, but while many of us take a moment to kick back, a reminder that our health and well-being don't take a holiday. As the temperature rises and the sun comes out, there's seasonal fodder for a summer national checkup panel. At the table tonight, Dr. Danielle Martin from Women's College Hospital, Dr. Viv Rao, the head of cardiovascular surgery at the Peter Monk Centre, and Dr. Peter Lin from the Canadian Heart Research Centre. Their thoughts in just a moment, but first, take a look at this. Summer. If you're not in the part of Canada surrounded by forest fires, it's a time for lazy days on a hot beach, a dip in a cool pool, or a walk in the woods. There have always been hazards around some of our favorite summertime activities, but now some signs that keeping safe is getting more complicated. Skin cancer rates are on the rise. The Canadian Cancer Society estimates 6,500 Canadians will be diagnosed with melanoma in 2014 and 1,050 of them will die. We've always been told sunscreen is the answer, but now a public health watchdog in the U.S. says a test on mice shows that a common ingredient in sunblock may actually increase the risk of developing skin cancer. And then there's this little guy. The deer tick can carry a bacteria that causes Lyme disease, which, if untreated, can cause serious harm. Since the tick first appeared in the woods of Canada in 2006, it spread to new areas and Lyme disease has increased every year. It's now predicted there will be 18,000 cases in Canada by 2020. But there's one big summer number that doesn't change. Preventable injury continues to be the number one cause of death in kids over the age of one. So three things there that we want to talk about and some tips on how to keep your family safe this summer. I'm going to start with you, Daniel, on uh, the idea of sunscreen. There's this study out of the U.S. It's on mice uh, that apparently shows that there's an increased risk of skin cancer. Uh, in some of these sprays, it contains something called retinal palmitate. Health Canada says there's no warning needed. What do you think? I mean, should people be looking at the labels, trying to figure out what to do with their sunscreens? I mean, the problem with looking at the labels is it's always a moving target, right? So uh, until and unless there's actually been a study on humans, you know, who are interacting in the real world, getting real amounts of sunlight, I don't think that this is something that we need to panic about. The bottom line is that we know that sunburns, particularly uh, multiple sunburns in people's younger years, can significantly affect people's uh, future risk of developing skin cancer. So on balance, it's much better to wear sunscreen. Pick a bottle that says broad spectrum, put it on, you know, after you've been swimming or you've gotten wet. And if you prefer to stay away from, from sunscreens altogether, then cover yourself up. I mean, you don't actually need to Put any cream at all on if you've got a long sleeve shirt, a hat, and some sunglasses. Sunscreen, no sunscreen. Dr. Lynn, what do you think? And the whole label issue, should people try and avoid these ingredients? Right, that retinol palmitate, it's actually a vitamin A derivative. So they added in there to try and keep our skin young. Hmm. And what they did is, it's not a sunscreen itself, but they tested it on mice. And what they did was they put this stuff onto these hairless mice and they shone light at them for four hours a day, five days a week for about 40 weeks. And then what they found is that it grew skin cancers because vitamin A and sun causes reactions in the skin. And we knew that already. So the key thing is that it's not the main one that's trying to protect you from the sun. Many of them have removed this, but if you are worried about it, then definitely stay away from it. And if you put on some sunscreen with this stuff, don't worry, because the amount that you got was very tiny compared to the ones that the mice got. So therefore, even if you used it accidentally or used it this year or last year, don't fret. It's a very small amount. You're not going to have any problems with it. What do you think, Viv? I mean, here are the warnings about sunscreen. It's so nice right. to be out in the sun. Sunscreen, no sunscreen, old debate. I agree with Danielle. There's lots of ways to protect yourself from the sun. You don't have to be exposed uh, and all your body parts exposed at all times. Uh, I also agree that I think sunscreen in balance is good for you, um, irrespective of what may be added on to try and uh, make it a gimmick, to try and market it. Uh, it's also important to know what you're putting on. So just because you have sunscreen on, if it's a low SPF, may not actually be doing anything for you. So make sure you have the appropriate protection that you think you're getting from the bottle that you're buying. Are we worried too much, though, about being in the sun? 
Well, I, I say this to my patients all the time, no matter what the actual disease condition is, is you have to have some common sense and some moderation, whatever you do. I think on balance, being outside, active, and enjoying the sun. I mean, come on, in Canada, we get three good months a year. Let's enjoy <laughs> it. And I'd rather people be out being active, being healthy, uh, than worrying about their sun exposure. Because I think on balance, you're going to have more health benefits from being active um, outside and then the sun exposure. So the actual how-tos on it, do you not apply it to babies? Do you have to do it every, like give us some tips. Sure, so in little babies, it's probably best not to apply sunscreen and not to have them in the direct sunlight in general. And little babies can get dehydrated quickly. It's a good idea to generally keep them covered, keep them in the shade. But if you're gonna be sending your two-year-old out to play in the sand, and you know, as you say, Viv, I'd rather have you know my kid playing out in the sand than sitting inside watching TV, that it, then it, it's better to put sunscreen on than not. So again, a, a measure of common sense applies here um, and better to put on sunscreen than to get sitting disease, right? And don't inhale. I read that today of right. Bill Clinton. Don't, well, uh, spray when you're spraying. Thing, right? So anyways, for people that have asthma and things like that, the spray, you can breathe it in and that might trigger an asthma attack. So they say you should spray it into your hand and then rub it on. So you might as well use the rub on. Um, the other thing is don't forget certain parts, you know, the tips of the ears. We see a lot of skin cancers there. You know, they got the baseball cap on. Mm, you forgot okay. that part. The back of the neck is also an area, the chin people forget, and the tops of your feet. If you love sandals, your feet are gonna get fried as well. So, and if you jump into the water, it washes off your sunscreen mostly, so we gotta reapply. And I think it's every two hours or so, that's what they sort of recommend in terms of reapplying. So we saw at the top of the news, there's fires, there's heat waves. Uh, what else can we do? What else should we watch for? Should we exercise, for example? Absolutely. Again, I think it's important for your overall health to be active. I think you have to be careful. Even in a heat wave? Absolutely. Even in a heat wave, but again, common sense has to prevail. So in extreme heat, you're not going to be running the 26-mile you know, marathon. Uh, but does that mean you stay indoors and watch TV? No, I think it's still, you get out there, you um, be careful with your hydration, make sure that you're uh, well hydrated. How do you know you're in trouble? Lots of signs, and sometimes they can be very, very subtle. Um, the, the primary sign is if you feel unwell, then you know something's wrong with you. And that could be fatigue, that could be confusion. If you see someone next to you who, feel, who doesn't look well, who appears to be disoriented, um, and they've obviously been in the sun a lot, um, they, that could be an early sign of heat stroke. One of the things that you can see, you know, looking at somebody is a very red skin. They may not be sweating, because, you know, paradoxically, you don't sweat when you have heat stroke. Um, but, uh, you know, there are other signs um, such as confusion, nausea, vomiting even, that uh, you've had severe damage from, from sun exposure. And so get out of the out of Get the out of the sun and hydrate. And, and hydrate. I want to move on now to, we saw that little tick. How big are they? They, they're, they look pretty tiny. Can you actually tiny. see a, a deer tick you on your skin? You can see the deer tick. And that's one of the things that we worry about is that we call it a deer tick because the deers basically are the ones that carry them around. And you were saying that it's spreading. It's because the deers are now moving. Yeah, so, why? Why? Yeah, so basically as the weather is warming up, the deers are now moving. And so the deer, basically a tick sits on them and they move to the high grasses. And we tell everybody to exercise, right? And some of them run into the high grass and they don't have any, you know, they got shorts on. So now the deer tick will bite onto them. And the real problem is that in certain ticks, they carry this bacteria, and that bacteria can now go into you, and then you get an infection, and you saw that big bullseye sort mm -hmm. of rash that you see. That's not a big deal. The rash is not painful or anything like that, but if the germ stays within your body, then it goes to your joints, it might go into your brain, it goes into different places. It can places. be quite serious. And that's where the serious part is. And you might not even connect it to a bite. You might say, oh, I got a bite. And then it's months and years later that you now discover that you're having all these things. And that's why we hear these horrible stories of people suffering as they go through. If you pick it up early, it's easy. You give some antibiotics and everything is good. So that's why we have to be a little careful about the tick. But we're not going to say stay out of the woods. No, of course not. But again, common sense, right? So if you're going to be going for a walk in a really woodsy area, particularly if the grasses are higher, then you want to wear long pants. I mean, you're going to do that anyway to just protect yourself from unpleasant mosquito bites and whatnot. Longer sleeves. People talk about tucking really? your Tia, people talk about tucking <laughs> your uh, tucking your pants into your socks. I'm not sure about that as fashion you advice, but as medical advice, it might be okay. <laughs> I know, I know. And, uh, and they were saying that you should wear white so that you can actually see right. the ticks on your clothing and then just check your pets, right? Because the pets are usually coming with you into the woods. So they may pick up the tick and then bring it to your home. And then now as you're rubbing up against your pet, you might get bit even within your home. So right. just check your pets as well. And tick bites are not painful. They're not painful and they're not itchy. So they'll look different and feel mm -hmm. different from, you know, a mosquito bite or another bite that you might be more likely to get. And I just want to emphasize what Peter's saying, that it really is rare. Like the majority, even people, even if you do get bitten by a tick, 
the chances of contracting Lyme disease are still small. So while it's important to keep an eye on things, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't think that we need to be overly worried about it. And if you see that sign, it, antibiotics. Treat right. that. Get, yeah. get checked. Yeah. Get, get medical help. Right. I think that's important. Again, I echo what Danielle said. It's very rare, but if you see that telltale um, below the target the, sign, the, tar yeah. the target sign. Thank you. Um, get yourself medical attention because the complications of Lyme disease can be very severe, but are entirely preventable if you seek early treatment. But again, don't let that prevent you from enjoying the summer. So one number hasn't changed at all, increase in melanoma, increase in Lyme disease, but one number hasn't changed, and that's the number of preventable injury-related deaths. So we're talking about everything from accidents in the playground to drowning. What, uh, what are some tips to avoid this, and why, does, why do we keep hearing about drowning every year as hundreds of Canadians are dying from this? Well, unfortunately, it's our children at risk. Um, and you know, it's hard to prescribe anything to parents on how to prevent this. I think if I have two words, it's be aware. Be aware of where your children are, what they're doing, and what they're wearing. Um, a very common sense rule is if you're around water at a cottage, for example, to have your young children wear life jackets. I know a lot of families insist that any children under the age of five wear a life jacket any time they're outside. I think mm -hmm. that's important, but you also need to know where they are and what they're doing, even if they have their life jacket on. So you wrap them up so that they can't get hurt. <laughs> well, you can, you, can, you can wrap them up, you can chain them inside, but again, in the end, are you doing them any favors? But again, I think common sense, be aware. Know what your children are doing, what they're wearing, where they're going. And I think well, we it, get relaxed, right? Because it's yeah. summertime, so we figure, ah, oh, they're just having fun, they're by the lake, they're by the pool, so everything is okay. But one of the problems that we find is that when kids fall into the water, the first thing they do is they get water in their mouth, so they try to cough, and that's just normal. But to cough, you have to breathe in before you can breathe out. So they breathe in, the water goes in. So now water is inside. Now they can't yell, they can't do anything. And so that's why it's a silent killer in a sense. You normally, we think about people thrashing around and things like that. And the drownings, they don't thrash around. They go in and then quietly they go down. And that's the problem is that if you're not keeping your eyes on them, that's going to be something that you won't hear. But it seems every summer we say that. Keep an eye on your kids, particularly people who have pools or live near a, a public pool. Is there anything that can be done? Well, there are some um, proposed policy solutions. So actually in communities and municipalities where there are bylaws that require that pools be fenced in, uh, the rates of accidental drowning or preventable drowning in kids are, are lower. Mm. Uh, swimming lessons. I mean, this is something we think about, you know, in the summertime because that's when our kids are wanting to get into the water. But actually swimming lessons save lives and your kid is never too young to learn how to float. Uh, in fact, there are uh, really interesting uh, ways that are being used to teach infants even how to, how to float if they fall into water. And then CPR training for um, all adults and members of the family so that if anyone uh, ends up in trouble, people know how to react in an emergency. Any other tips for staying safe this summer? Well, we start doing weird things, things that we don't do, right? So now people are gardening, they're doing all sorts of walking on rocks and things like that. Having a beer, Having perhaps? Having a beer outside? and then doing things. So alcohol plus outside, you might fall in, you're dehydrated, the alcohol will affect you more. So we're doing a lot of different things. So just, just pay attention a little, just think a little bit and just be aware of your kids. I think if we did that, we can enjoy but at the same time, we won't hear all these horrible stories coming across the news wires. So we shouldn't just sort of stay in the basement. No cocooning. And watch, no. watch TV all summer. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Thank you very much. Some good advice there. We'll see how uh, how we can enjoy our summer with those tips. Thanks so much.